So yeah, I used to do tons of these, like 1D4 Chan Gore articles, especially when it came to 40k, and I've never done one of D&D. So I thought, you know what, I haven't done one of these in a long time, it has to be, what, maybe 8 months? Probably something like 8-9 months since I've done one. But look, I love Beholders, they're my favourite monster, I really enjoy them, so look, let's get into this, will we? A beholder is a giant, lumpy thing that looks like a floating octopus with a giant eye in the middle. The tentacles also have eyes at the end of them. Yuck. Ew. <laughs> Ew. 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 Eyes. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> Beholders, like mind flayers, are considered intellectual property of TSR Wizards no, of the no, Coast. No, no, Wizards of the Coast. Wizards of the Coast. Okay. <laughs> So they aren't allowed to be used in a third party D&D supplements or in Pathfinder as they were not covered under open gaming license. This naturally doesn't stop weirdly similar creatures from appearing in various weeaboo JRPGs and related works, where they're usually called gazers or similar. Yes, this includes Monster Girls. Of course one game even used the name Beholder, but we all excuse it because this game is the game of legend. <laughs> you know, that's one thing I really am happy with Wizard of the Coast. They're not like Games Workshop, where they're actually kind of cool. Yeah. Like this type of shit. Yeah. You know, Games Workshop, they really do take the piss when it comes to infringing on intellectual property. You yeah. Know, like, you know, a lot of times, like, oh, okay, we've got to change from, like elves or Eldar to like Alf or some shit yeah. like that. It's like. Dry clowns make a different kind of balloon animal. <laughs> Personality and characteristics. Beholders are selfish bastards who love to manipulate and enslave any race considered beneath themselves, i.e. every other species. They are extremely xenophobic, even going so far as to kill other individuals of their species that look even slightly different from themselves, though they will always go after the more extreme divergences first. Two beholders will gang up on the freak with scales and fiery eyes before trying to kill each other over the differences in their numerous teeth. So basically, the D&D equivalent of a Dalek. Despite this, or perhaps because of it, the Beholder race has a lot of genetic variety, as evidenced by the number of Beholder variants, all of whom hate each other, as listed below. They are greedy, often living in dungeons stuffed with valuables, they can cast magic from their eyes and often rule over unwilling souls through domination. One even runs the Thieves' Guild of Skullport, the most recent of several Beholders to have done so. Beholders worship the Great Mother, and due to their massive egos, each Beholder is convinced that not only does the Great Mother look exactly like itself, but also that it is literally their mother. False memories are funny like that. Beholders also have another god named Zimid, who is associated with gases and deception. Much information about their biology and culture was revealed in the book Lords of Madness. Notable variants, second and third edition. Beholder, your basic beholder, a central eye that projects an anti-magic cone and 10 smaller eyes that each fire a different ray, such as charm person, disintegrate and flesh to stone. Goth, basically Bobby's first beholder, Bobby's, okay. <laughs> with only six eye stalks of doom and a reduced ability to disintegrate everyone. Eyeball. Tiny beholder. Best used as a familiar. Pretty damn adorable for a beholder. Still neutral evil. Death tyrant. Basically a beholder lich. Yeah, you're probably fucked. Death kiss. Instead of dispending death beams from its eye stalks, they use them to suck your blood. Aster eater. That's you. <laughs> Giant space faring asteroid beholder kin with no eye stalks that eats your ship. For some reason, it likes to enslave gift to use as soldiers. Spelljammer was weird. Beholders and other beholder kin insist that they have no relation to them. I'd say that's the same with any beholder being not losing to any other beholder. Though. <laughs> yeah. Examiner. Four eye stalks, four limbs, and no central eye. Their limbs let them use tools and weapons, and they can create magic items. They also regenerate one hit point every round. Lensman. The lowest of all beholderkin. Looks like a cross between a starfish and an ape with a single eye. They may have one of six different powers. Watcher. The second lowest of beholderkin. Has three normal eyes around its body and a large compound eye on the top surrounded by six eye spots. And a single tentacle on the bottom which can inflict electric shocks. Its three regular eyes each have two different powers 
and the combined eye can use three of those powers. Can cast the message and tongue spells. They are cardly and mainly act as scouts for the more powerful cousins. Elder Orb. A larger beholder with a much longer than normal lifespan. Always has at least six levels of sorcerer. Hive Mother slash Hive Tyrant. The highest rank of all beholders and beholder kin. Basically a bigger, meaner beholder that holds beholders and beholder kin under its sway. Spectre. True neutral beholder kin. It's actually pretty swell, as far as beholders go. Remember that one beholder in Baldur's Gate? They can be summoned with a ritual using four beholder's eye stalks. Overseer. A beholder kin that looks like a giant fleshy tree trunk with 13 eye stalk branches, tentacles for roots, and several mouths at the base. Yes, I realise it looks nothing like a beholder, but the book says it is, so fuck it. Let's call it a beholder. Like the hive mother, it also has the ability to dominate other beholders. Eye of the deep. It's like a beholder, but underwater. And it tastes oddly of shrimp. Ooh. Also, it got little arms with crab pincers. Only has two eye stalks and the central eye can flash blinding light. Also can cast the spell Persistent Image, which it uses to create illusion of mermaids and other things to lure victims closer. Director. A beholder kin with three bottom tentacles that it uses to ride vermin, usually giant centipedes. Because haven't we all wanted to ride a giant centipede like a pony up and down the streets? Shut up, I don't judge you. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> has six eye stalks and its central eye generates a protective force field around itself and its mount. Beholder Mage When the DM wants the entire party to die horrible deaths but doesn't feel like using rocks, this is a special character class that only true beholders can take, which requires them to remove their anti-magic eye and whenever they gain the ability to cast a new level of spells, must sacrifice one of their eye powers to turn that eye stock into a spell stock which casts spells of that level. At level 10, its empty eye sockets can absorb spells to heal it. All the cheese of a wizard with more spells per day, the ability to blast 10 spells at once at you as free actions, and fucking spontaneous casting. Even munchkins shit their pants in fear when they hear of these things. One of the unholy trinity of fuck off broken PCs that you can technically enter. The others being tainted scholars and illithid savants. And that's before you start optimising the bastards because the fucker can still take 10 more levels before becoming epic. Groger. A beholder king created to fight beholders. It does not have any eye powers other than the anti-magic eye. It attacks with a long barbed tongue which it uses to disable other beholders eyes. Larger than regular Beholder, it has four small legs hanging off of their body. Gorbel, a clawed Beholder with no eye powers that likes to explode. Orbis, a spellcasting Beholder with no eyes other than anti-magic central eye. Dim Sphere, a ghost Beholder created by a magical explosion. So is it like one of those ghosts from, you know, the Haunted Mansion in Mario? Oh, fuck, no, not one what of them. What are those? Oh, they're a disease-carrying zombie beholder. The Chinese beholder, I'm not taking on. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Fourth edition. Fourth edition made use of quite a few different kinds of beholders, though almost all of them were pretty raptastic, being made for higher levels. Most kinds of beholders had a telekinesis ray that they could use to slide enemies about, though for most, that's all they do. Goth. Pretty much the same as old editions, this is the pitiful little baby of the Beholder family in 4th edition, and something you can toss at low level parties to scare them without killing them. Level 5 elites that can shoot fire, sleeping rays and exhaustion rays, and immobilise with its central eye. Blood kiss. Another carryover, and the second weakest Beholder started. This one got the undead subtype for some reason. Guess they didn't read up and thought it was just a Beholder vampire. Level 9 solo controller that relies on its blood-sucking tentacles to rip up anything in its reach. Though it also packs a psychic plus dazing effect death scream attack and can hit people a lot of times. Eye of Shadow Beholders who spent too long in the shadow fell, dissolving into a blot of darkness and hate. Fairly puny, level 12 elite, but seriously trolling with blinding rays thundering rays, freezing rays, and the ability to pull off a teleport 20 squares and then be invisible trick. Eye of Flame. A beholder that specialises in burninating shit. 
Central Eye gives vulnerability to fire and causes fire attacks to do ongoing eye stock blast foes with fire and fear effects. A low paragon tier. Level 13 elite. Foe. Eye of Frost. We got a burn your ass beholder. So evidently we need a freezinating beholder. Slightly tougher. One level higher than its counterpart. Central Eye means cold damage can immobilise those it looks at. Weirdly, it's got two kinds of freezing rays. One that does a lot of cold damage, and one that does less cold damage but freezes your ass solid. Beholder spawn. Baby beholders want to eat your face too. <laughs> Level 15 minions that can bite or do elemental damage with their eye rays. Death tyrant. Zombie eye tyrants pretty much. Way weaker than their older namesakes. Level 15 solo. Central eye can strip away necrotic resistance. Guess what kind of damage it does most. And slow you. The eye beams focused on kill you dead. Choice is whether it just necrotic damages you to death, petrifies you, makes you die, or makes you die and then come back again as a ghoul. Oh, and it has a fear ray too. Ghost beholder. Dead eye tyrant who came back as a ghost. A level weaker and only an elite, but still pretty nasty. Freezing eye rays and the ability to possess and mind control your dudes. Not a lot of fun if your will is shitty. Eye Tyrant. Your basic beholder for this edition, and pretty damn nasty. Level 19 solo. Can daze you with its central eye, or use the eye stocks to cause radiant and necrotic damage. Put you to sleep, paralyze you, confuse you, terrify you, petrify you, disintegrate you, or kill you outright. Eye of Chaos. Now we're getting to the big guns. Level 25 elites that will drive you almost as crazy as themselves with the ability to lock you down to at will powers only with their central eye and hit you with rays of force, binding, confounding, madness, fear or teleportation. Ultimate Tyrant. They ain't fucking kidding when they named this bastard. Level 29 Solo. There are ancient dragons that aren't this nasty. Central eye locks you down. Other eyes can drive you mad, unravel you, dissolve you, burn you, Freeze you, drag you around, petrify you, disintegrate you, pull you closer or hurl you away. Eternal Tyrant. Because even the Ultimate Tyrant isn't ultimately enough. This bastard is an undead version of the Ultimate Tyrant that comes in a pair of linked entities. The Shell, a Beholder Golem, level 31 Elite Brute, and the Essence, a hyper powerful Beholder Ghost, level 33 Elite Artillery. These assholes are literally god tier monsters. You had damn well better know what you're doing when you fight an internal tyrant. 5th edition. 5th edition's first monster manual provides three forms of beholder. Common beholder, or eye tyrant, death tyrant, and spectator. The first two variants are what 5th edition calls legendary creatures, meaning they have extra powers in their layers that they can trigger on initiative count 20. Certain specific effects mark the regions in which their layer and they have special legendary actions that they can perform outside of the normal turn sequence. Their legendary ego has been given up a serious boost. Now, beholders mutate at random just by accidentally thinking too hard. Their ego is that overpowering. This is also how they reproduce now, by sleeping and dreaming of other beholders, bending reality in that way. It's actually like how I really like that concept with yeah. beholders. Like, you know, I love... Oh, I just really enjoy Beholders, right? I'm sorry. <laughs> Beholder. You know it. You hate it. Challenge level 13. It has old anti-magic cone central eye back. A bite back for piercing damage. And 10 eye rays. Of which it can use 3 each round. Rolling randomly to determine which 3 it has. Charming ray. Paralyzing ray. Fear ray. Slowing ray. Innervation ray. Telekinetic ray. Sleep ray. Petrification Ray, Disintegration Ray, and Death Ray. That's a lot of rays. That is a lot of fucking rays. It can burn one of its three legendary actions at the end of another creature's turn to blast somebody with a random eye ray. Its layer effects consist of three options. Change a 50 foot square up to 120 feet distance into slimy, difficult terrain. Make any wall within 120 feet sprout flailing appendages Ooh. Ooh, that, <laughs> that grapple anyone within 10 feet who can't beat a DC 15 strength, athletics or dexterity acrobatics check or cause an eye to pop out 
on any solid surface within 60 foot that can then shoot a random eye ray at any enemy within its sight. For region effects, they are all fluffy. Creatures within one mile sometimes feel they're being watched, or minor reality warps that can affect inanimate objects, marking changing on a wall, slime coating a statue, etc. Pop up whilst the beholder is sleeping. Volo's Guide to Monsters introduce a table of potential alternative eye rays, in case your party was feeling complacent. Death Tyrant. A beholder who dreamed of living forever, so it died in sleep and became an undead beholder's skull with ghostly eyes. It trades the anti-magic cone for a negative energy cone. Creatures can't regain hit points. Humanoids that die in the area of effect become zombies under the Death Tyrant's command on the next turn. It has the same eye rays and legendary actions as the Beholder. Its lair actions are variants of the Beholder's. Its grabbing walls are DC 17 and reach into the ethereal plane. It creates a 50 foot cube of lightly obscured difficult terrain and it can create a spectral eye at any point within 50 feet, which can also target foes on the ethereal plane. It has one crunchy regional effect. A creature that is both hostile to the Death Tyrant and aware of its existence must roll a d20 if it finishes a long rest within one mile of the Death Tyrant's lair. On a 10 or less, it gets zapped with a random eye ray. Spectator, a lesser Beholder variant with only four eye stalks, conjured from another plane of existence via ritual that it requires four Beholder's eye stalks as material components. It's only challenging level three and it's lawful neutral rather than the lawful evil ones of others. It has confusion ray, a paralyzing ray, a fever ray, and a wounding ray. It can magically create all the food and water it needs to sustain itself each day. It's a fool's gambit to attack it with spells thanks to its spell reflection reaction, which lets it retarget a spell that missed the spectator, or which forced to save that the spectator passed, against other creatures within the spectator's line of sight, and that is at least 30 feet from the spectator. Beholder Zombie, much weaker than a living beholder, loses most of its eye rays and its anti-magic cone. Death's Kiss, a beholder who had nightmares about bleeding out, spawns a vampire tentacle monster, using toothy mouth stalks to voraciously suck the blood from other creatures. It also bleeds lightning, for some reason. Not as smart as a normal beholder, but for this reason, not as egotistical or paranoid. Added to Volo's Guide of Monsters. Goth, a smaller beholder who sometimes shows up if you screw up the ritual to summon a spectator. It got six eye stalks, four tentacles, and smaller eyes around its central eye. So it's hard to understand how wizards can get confused when it lies and claims to be the real deal. The issue is that goths are magic eaters, sucking the juice from magical items to sustain their cells. You also can see why that makes them pretty piss poor guards for a wizard's lair. They're weaker than true beholders, and also less xenophobic. Also, they explode when you kill them. Gazer, a ridiculously adorable and weak little beholder. Only challenge half, that is, a 26th of the strength of a true beholder, that is sometimes dreamed into being. They're so amusingly pathetic that even pure beholders often keep them as pets, and they have the same sadistic ego of a full beholder in miniature. Have caused a lot of argument over whether the sidebar on Gazer Familiars is intended for PCs as well or just for Mage and PCs. And if so, if house rules should be used to slot them in a chain packed Warlock Familiars, let them take the action to fire their eye rays, etc. Mind Witness A beholder converted into an illithid like creature via Ceramorphosis. Now, those of you who aren't currently running from your computers in terror have stopped screaming. The end result is less terrifying, perfect marriage of beholder eye rays with illithid mind rape and the combined egotism of both. Fuck, I've tried to record that, I don't know how many times, so that's what you're getting, okay? <laughs> yeah, this made, made, made five minutes in on this one sentence. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> and more quasi-lobotomized, docile, glorified psionics. Like, fuck, email server. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Though still smarter than the average human. Notably, if the illithids and elder brains they serve are slaughtered and they survive, mind witnesses tend to drift around looking for other psionic creatures to serve, taking on the alignments and world views of those they meet, be they kindly flumps or evil demons. Four of their eye stalks become tentacles, but they have six kinds of eye rays, 
fear, telekinetic, and slowing rays like those of normal cousins, but also aversion rays that cause disadvantage on attack rolls, stunning rays that stun creatures, and a psychic ray that causes a pile of psychic damage. Similar monsters. Beholders are not the only monsters that look like floating orbs with eyes. Gas for. Not a tree beholder or beholderkin, but a fungus that resembles a beholder. May have been created by a beholder mage, or maybe a fungus that took on the form of the beholder that it fed on. Or maybe it's just mundane evolutionary mimicry. Thygar, also known as the beholder eater. It is a predator that eats beholders. It's a giant orb covered in eyes with several mouths on end of its stalks. It does not have any eye powers, but it is immune to mind-affecting magic and highly resistant to its body being physically affected by magic. So there isn't much a beholder can do against it. Deep Spawn An orb with six large tentacles and several retractable eye stalks. Three of its tentacles ends in mouths, and the other three can wield weapons. It has the ability to give birth to loyal clones of creatures it has previously eaten, making them useful for villains who want to populate their dungeons with a variety of monsters. Relation to beholders unknown. Gibbering Orb An epic version of the Gibbering Mouther. An amorphous orb covered in mouths and eyes, which have eye rays similar to a beholder. Possibly is the common ancestor of beholders and Gibbering Mouthers. Lurking Strangler these creatures are to beholders what monkeys are to humans. A tiny aberration that looks like a pair of flying eyeballs connected by a cord of muscle. It likes to strangle sleeping enemies to death. And it can put enemies to sleep with one of two eye rays. Beholders sometimes keep these things as pets. Fear. A living manifestation of nightmares that forms when a large number of people in the area all have nightmares in one night. It has a roughly spherical body covered in eyes, mouths and tentacles, no relation to beholders. Astral Dreadnought, a huge predator that lives in the astral plane, that has a single eye with anti-magic abilities similar to beholders' central eye, relation to beholders unknown. Notable Beholders, that beholder head of the Thieves Guild who was the first major boss in Boulder's Gate Dark Alliance. Another beholder head of another Thieves Guild who was the final boss of the first eye of the beholder game. That funny spectator you kept running into and quasi befriended in Baldur's Gate 2. That blind death tyrant boss you had to get a special god killing magic wand in in Baldur's Gate 2. That beholder in Dungeons and Dragons Heroes. That beholder in Futurama who's there for no apparent reason. Was meant to be guarding some passage in the central bureaucracy but fell asleep in the job. Xanathar. The writer of Xanathar's Guide to Everything and head of Skullport's Thieves Guild. Which includes new options for classes and backgrounds, along with his snide comments running throughout. Apparently he's only one of many beholders to have used the title since the first one seized power. Notable for being one of the few beholders to remotely care for a being other than itself. He really loves his pet goldfish. It's kind of adorable. What he doesn't know is that his beloved pet goldfish has been replaced several times by the Thieves Guild since goldfishes don't live very long Aww. and he would not be happy if he ever found out. Aww, Aww. Poor, poor Beholders as monster girls. Because it's always God. a monster girl. Anything else to exist uh, has to be a monster girl. The proof that nothing, absolutely nothing is sacred. Even beholders got anthropomorphized into sexy, almost human female by those irredeemably insane weebs. God damn it, Japan! I think you got them. <laughs> I know you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me it's not his fault. Yeah, I know it's him. Gazers, as they are typically known due to copyright, are often depicted as arrogant, selfish beings that do not hesitate to use their eye ray powers to get what they want. Of course... Fitting for a monster girl setting, their powers are less destructive than that of D&D Beholder, going more towards charm, hypnotism and mind control. Still, Beholder girls are a rarity, simply because there's something rather counterintuitive about turning a floating head full of teeth and eyes into a monster girl. Perhaps the most well-known example of them on TG is the gazer of the monster girl encyclopedia, whose smug grin currently adorns this section of the page. Described as spiteful and full of themselves, their deepest secret is that this is mostly bluster to cover up feelings of insecurity about their looks. They specialise in hypnotic spells, mostly to brainwash men into falling in love with them. 
By the way, if any of you guys are interested in having a Monster Girl Gazer, we'll throw this up on screen right here now. Also There's the statue. The also, it'll be in the comments for you. So if you're that creepy motherfucker who wants to play as a Monster Girl, there you go. And so. Garbro, don't be fucking throwing a Gazer. <laughs> yeah, Garbro. <laughs> I know what you're on about. I know what you're on. So uh, let us know what you thought down below. Um, I haven't done like a lore... 1d4 chat article in forever and there's quite a few like you know monsters that i would love to like go over in depth and the tg articles are amazing if you ask if you haven't been on 1d4 chat just do it it's a great also it's the best wiki out there i really enjoy it you can spend hours on the website you know what i mean and it's getting in such a way it's actually fun to read you know what i mean i really enjoy it um so definitely something to check out if you're interested in that also if you have any ideas for like you know the next monster lore deep dive we should do let us know in the comments down down below i'm really thinking maybe a task or maybe a mimic or you know there's tons of stuff you can work with you know but like as always guys hope you guys enjoyed remember like subscribe all the other good shit wash your hands all that and we'll see you in the next video bye